how do we train leaders, whether it's the Naval Academy or other leadership forums? There is obviously no, it's not, it's not engineering. It's not a science, right? There, there is a science to it, but it's mostly, I would argue, tends to be more art than science. So it's like, how do you teach someone how to paint? And well, one, you, you give them, you try to give them a broad experience and a broad foundation that focuses on maybe successful traits of other leaders. I used to like to read a lot of biographies about famous leaders. You know, I love reading about Admiral Nimitz and, you know, what, how he grew up through the ranks and lessons he learned along the way. And so you're really just kind of building that base. And, and then I think it's important as a leader to understand too, what your strengths are. There are, you know, some folks that are more introverted than others and they might lead in a different style. There's others that love to be, they're great communicators and, and uh, you put them in front of a crowd and they can get them to do anything they want. Um, there's some that are very analytical and like the science and the math, and there's some that are more intuitive and they tend to rely on, you know, understanding their advisors and making those kind of, and so, you know, there's no, there's no one path or one right way to be a leader and you have to stay true to what works for you. And, and so I think as you study other leaders and you study the, the fundamentals of leadership, it that might not work for you. It might be something different. So uh, I think that's important as you go along, you develop as a young leader, knowing you're going to have your own style. If you approach it that way, then when something happens, you're not necessarily trying to go to your playbook and try to look up the recipe for how to solve a problem because it's never going to be there, right? You're going to fall back on, okay, yeah, you, maybe you might think about, okay, maybe what would Nimitz have done in this situation? But more than likely, you've just kind of, you've developed a way to think over the years and how you approach problems and what your, your, your core fundamentals are. And that's generally where I found that, you know, when in doubt, you know, I, I defaulted to those types of decisions. So I think in my career, I, I learned early on that, you know, if you focus on your sailors, you focus on the people that, that you're leading, which I think is the number one fundamental of any kind of leadership role is you're taking care of your people. Um, and if you take care of your people, then they're going to take care of everything else. Um, but I found that, you know, if you, if you focus on that and you make sure when you make decisions, it stays true to that fundamental, you can really help drive a culture and you can really, I think, you know, build a, a superior organization. And I think countless times when faced with a decision on a carrier, whether I was the XO or a squadron CO, and I always try to default to now how, you know, all right, I'm making a policy decision here that'll affect the command. How will the sailors be impacted? You know, this isn't a give everybody ice cream candy kind of thing. You know, that's not what the, that's not what your folks want. They want to be, you know, led, given the resources they need, and held accountable. But if you're making an arbitrary policy, because you know, example would be you have, you know, one or two sailors get in trouble for something, right? They they get in trouble because they came in after curfew. Well, you could you could then make a decision to say that okay, we're gonna we're not gonna let anybody go out, or we're gonna make curfew even earlier, and then you you have to kind of step back and go, well, there's, I've had two sailors out of 500, a thousand, 5,000. Why would I make a policy that's going to impact, you know, thousands of people because, you know, I wanted this zero defect mentality. So for me, it was, you know, I knew a core belief for me was as a leader, you're taking care of your people. Let's, t let's think about how you're taking care of them. How, what would be the impact if I were to arbitrarily punish 5,000 or 2,000 or even just two people that work for me? because of the, you know, one or two that made a mistake. And that, that kind of helped me, I think, along the way. And I think with that, I built an effective organization. I was mindful of the impact of their time. I was mindful of the effect, you know, impact on our, uh, our mission, you know, because it all kind of, it all relates together. I, I think, again, it's leadership is science and art. There's a lot of art and it's also very personal based on your own skill sets. And you have to always understand what your fundamental tenets are, you know, which again, I, I think personally, it's that as a leader, you're taking care of your people and whatever scenario that is. Mm -hmm.